Welcome to the podcast. Today I'm joined by Ted, Brighton under 23 midfielder. Um, welcome to the podcast, Ted. Thank you very much for having me, mate. Good to see you. Um, I thought I'd start by talking about how we know each other a bit. Um, obviously, known each other since we were quite young, uh, playing football for Rivervale and Van Dinians. I now play uh, on a Tuesday at Warhol against old blokes. You play for Brighton, so gone down a bit different paths, but um, yeah. yeah. Nah, they were they were great times, mate. I remember we didn't lose a game for about two years at Old Vandinians. Yeah, I think um, from you and like Ishmael and uh, me, really. Yeah, throwing yourself in there, are you? Yeah, yeah. Um, what? Do you uh, do you remember in La Manga? I was uh, talking to my brother the other day when we were playing like um in that tournament in in the I can't remember where it was somewhere in the Manga and the Astro with me. Uh, you and both our brothers. Yeah, I remember. They called it the World Cup, I think. Like, they take it like proper seriously. And I think we, we went up to them, didn't we? And we were like, oh, come us four be on the same team. Yeah. And they were like, yeah, fine. And we just ruined everyone. Do you think that's one of the main reasons why you're now playing for Brighton? Or? Uh, yeah, I'll put it up there as, as top yeah. three, definitely, mate. Yeah. <laughs> um, I thought I'd just start to do with that, sort of how you got into football, really. Uh, Sort of obviously, I, I know we played a bit together when we were younger at Westos as well. But um, was it? Yeah, you, played, you started quite young, didn't you? Yeah, it was. It was those kind of places like Westos and Stoneham Park, um, Albion in the community, kind of the things they put on on every every other Saturday. Um, just, just kind of took it as a bit of a, a bit of a bit of fun, and then obviously started playing well. Picked up by Brighton at about 10 and then obviously everything's a bit more serious when you get into the into the academy side of things. Um, and yeah, it just, went, it just went from there. So at 10, you went like, what, a couple of times a week or like, regular, like once a week on like a Saturday or what was it like? Uh, at 10, I, I don't think it was called the academy. I think it was called the Elite Performance Centre or something. It's, Brighton weren't, the first team wasn't wasn't brilliant then. Um, but we we would train two or three times a week here and then play on a play on a Sunday. So yeah, we we were doing quite quite a lot of hours for for ten year olds, definitely. Yeah. Do you think that was like uh, you were old enough to really be playing like that, or do you think that was the right age, or would you prefer to like sort of wait a bit longer to get into that academy sort of football? Um, to be fair, they 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 wanted me when I was nine, and then they told me, you know, what what we're doing. Um, these these are the hours. This is what you have to do. And I said no. I don't want to. I don't want to do that kind of. I like, I like playing with my mates on, on on just a Sunday. Maybe training once a week. Yeah. Um. But. Uh, yeah. Going in at ten, maybe I probably could have waited maybe another year, year or two. Probably would have been a bit more fun playing with the with the lads at, on a, on a Sunday. But it's worked out okay, so I'm not complaining. Yeah. What age did you have to sort of like give up playing? Like, so if you play for Vandinians, I can't. What yeah. age did you have to stop playing like with your mates on a Sunday in case like they obviously don't want you getting injured or anything? Uh, yeah. Well, yeah, they tried to stop it straight away. Um, but I, I played on a little bit for three or four months. But then I remember I picked up an injury in one of the games and they were just like, oh, where have you got that from? And 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 I, and I told them, and they they put a stop to it straight away. Yeah, yeah, that's fair enough. And um, do you think, do you think you would have preferred to play like Sunday league? You, if they didn't find out, say like if you didn't get injured, do you think you would have carried on playing like with your mates for a few more years, or do you think you would have stopped, actually stopped it by yourself? Uh, yeah, I probably w- I probably would have stopped it eventually, as um, the games. They were they were they were tough. Um, the Sunday league games on those pitches, you know, even though you're you're only eleven, twelve, but it's still it's still hard on the legs a little bit. Um, I don't think I would have been able to play two or three games a week. Um, so yeah, I probably I probably would have put a stop to it myself. To be fair, yeah, you've also played quite a lot for like England uh, youth groups. Um, did you start like under 14s? Is that right? Or was it earlier that you were playing for, for England? Uh, 15s, I think they, they start the first camps. So yeah, it was 15s, it was the, was the first one. 
And was that like a camp at like St George's Park, or did you go on like a tour? Like I've seen you bit going to like Portugal, place like that. Yeah, uh, the first one uh, was it was kind of like there were there were three different camps um, to try and like make up one team. So they they cherry picked the the players from from those three camps um, to make one team, and that was at Loughborough University, which was actually really nice to be fair. It's really good there. Um, so we we done that one. And then a few months later, they invited um, a few of them back to St. George's Park, which is where they kind of started to form the main the main team. And that, that's where it started, yeah. Yeah, do you think, was it like sort of surreal playing, like thinking you're playing for England, like wearing the same shirt as like people, obviously like Rooney and players like that? Yeah, it, it it was mad. Yeah, especially when I first when you first go to St George's Park. I don't know if you've been, but they've got um, England players everywhere, all over the walls. All the like rooms are named after all the players. Um, and yeah, when when you I think the first game was against Turkey, and it yeah it was a bit surreal going into the change room and seeing um, an England shirt in your place. Definitely. Are there any players you sort of play with then that you'd like? You, that I would be like aware of now sort of that like, I, I think I know quite a few youth players but sort of any like big names that you sort of played with at that age uh, uh, yeah there's a few um, who was there non, Nonny, Nonny's doing really well now yeah, Nonny Meduego yeah he left Spurs didn't he yeah 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 uh, who else Morgan Morgan's doing well he's on loan at Lincoln Morgan Rogers yeah um Taylor Harwood Bellis is doing well. I think he's at Blackburn. He, uh, yeah, from City is, it? is he from City? He's from, yeah, he's from City. Yeah, Cole Palmer was was always there. He's good. Yeah. Um, so yeah, there, 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 there's a few players that are doing doing really well now. Yeah. Um, do you think? Obviously, you played for a couple of years and then you had a bit of an injury. Well, quite a big injury, didn't you? To your was it your knee that you injured? Uh, yeah, I ruptured my ACL. Yeah. Yeah, and that was was that. When you were like 15, 16, wasn't it? That was, yeah, that was another 16 tournament in, in Florida. Um, I ruptured that, which wasn't ideal. Yeah. Um, that put you out for what, like a year or so, didn't it? Yeah, it was about, about 10 months. Yeah, just under a year, I think that was. Yeah. Do you, do you think that sort of, because uh, it's quite a young age to get quite a big injury, do you think that's helped you now with like, I don't know how you train and like recover and that sort of thing? Uh, yeah, I would say so, definitely. And as well, off, off the pitch as well, you know, you, you, you take a step back from football a little bit. And at that age, you know, all your mates are starting to go out, um, which I could join in a little bit. And I think it's important to enjoy yourself, um, not just, especially at that age, not just 100% focus, 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 because it's not good for you. I don't think so. It, it, was, it was important for me. And then I wouldn't say I needed it, but I think it has helped me a lot, the injury. Do you think that's something that you find hard, not hard, but like is like quite a big thing? Obviously, like for me, I can do whatever I want. Like I can eat whatever I want. I can go yeah. out and like it won't really matter. Then the next day, if I'm like a bit hungover at work or like starting to get a bit of weight on, it's like it's not a big deal. Whereas like if you do that, I imagine you get pulled up. It would get pulled up at training. Do you find that difficult? Like not uh, going out or like going eating whatever you want that sort of thing. Uh, yeah, I do. I do find it difficult. Yeah, it's not. It's not ideal. I do like food as well, food and drink. But um, to be fair, you're the, the my best mates are at the well. Most of them are all at the clubs. I see them every day. We all we all kind of do the same thing. So none of it's not like I'm I'm left out. We all we're all in the in the same position. So we all just kind of deal with it together. So you got sort of deal with it by sort of surrounding yourself with people who have to do the similar thing. 100%, yeah, definitely. Do you all have like sort of, it might seem like a dumb question, but like meal plans and like that sort of thing or is that uh, can you sort of control yourself? Uh, it's, it's mainly that. I mean, they, they give us um, like a like a six week kind of kind of diet plan, but I don't I don't really think anyone sticks to it, to be honest. But you know, you know your limits and you know what, what, you, what you should be eating and what you shouldn't. I think every, everyone would know that. Yeah. Um, so it is. It's 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 up to you, really. But I think most most of the players um, 
take good care of their, their health. Yeah. And do you get much time off? Like, obviously, um, younger you get, obviously, summers. But now, I think I, I remember you saying that you only get, like, a couple of weeks to go on holiday. Do you, do you think do you get much time away from football at all now? Um, we do we do a bit. The twenty the twenty threes is a lot easier than the than the eighteens in terms of hours you do, and even the first team is even a bit more or less hours when I'm over there. Yeah. Um, but the hour the hours are weird. The uh, like the summer the summer holidays is is like is like end of May to June when all your mates are at uni and um, so you're just like oh I'm I'm done but no one else everyone else is still still doing stuff which is a bit annoying and then when when everyone else is finished in august time which is which is like the best way the best times to go away everyone else is out and you're and then you've got to go back in for pre-season yeah and i was like um because obviously our families know each other so like i was your mum and brother you can't really go away with them can you because like they they have to go at a certain time because your brother plays and and then you have to go yeah. at time for your football is that quite difficult like not being able to go on holiday with them. Yeah, it is, yeah, it is a bit annoying. Yeah, we we always go, we always end up going for a week. We always go to La Manga every year, which is nice. But it's it's it's, it's at a weird time and it's not that hot. It's it's better than here, but it's not like a summer summer holiday. Do you know what I mean? But it's, it's all right. Yeah. Do you think like obviously it's probably hard with the season and stuff, but do you think football and like clubs in general should give like a bit of more time off or do you think because it's such like a hard thing to get into you need so much time at the training ground um i think yeah i think other people take it better than others um some kids will i've i've seen players not come in not come back in off from a from a some from a summer um break literally people, coaches are calling them they're like no i'm not coming I'm not coming back in. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> then, like, yeah, they just they just wouldn't come back in. Um, but then other people are back in it, or pe- some people um, don't don't really do anything apart from work out during the summer holidays. Just yeah. ready, just ready for preseason because it's it's a tough time. Um, so yeah, ev- everyone's a bit different. Is that I've I've seen like a lot of interviews with footballers. They say like preseason, the first day back, it's like hell, isn't it? Like just yeah. just running. Yeah, you go out football pitch, but no footballs. You just see cones and poles, and oh, it's a it's a nightmare. <laughs> it's awful. Yeah, it doesn't sound fun. I think for me, half an hour down water on a Tuesday night, I'm absolutely yeah. so. Yeah. I imagine like professional football running around. Um, do you think like there's quite a lot of I've been looking at a lot of like how much pressure there is on academy footballers with like sort of. Uh, agents like contracts that sort of thing like when really like at our age you don't really know that much about that sort of thing do you find that um quite difficult with like having to like talk about I know you probably have an agent but like talk about like contracts and like I know you're signed with humor that sort of thing is that quite a lot to take on at at your age uh yeah yeah it is when I when I first started doing it was it was it was exciting but it was it was a bit overwhelming um, you need to go up to go up to meet a lot of people um, when you don't really when you don't really want to um, taking pictures with um, you know like brand, branded stuff when you're not you don't really want to yeah um, but no nah, it's it, it, it it's weird but but it is it is exciting and I, I don't mind that that side of stuff it's not too bad yeah. Did that first sort of come about quite soon after, obviously not at 10, but like sort of like 14, 15, you sort of getting like uh, food companies and that sort of thing approaching you or was it like a bit later? Yeah, when when you first get um, selected into an into an England camp, then it starts coming coming a lot. Yeah. Um, so after after the the on the first under 15 games against Turkey, um, my, I remember there was a, I think there was a coach at Brighton and he just said my phone has not stopped ringing um, after that game just just people want, wanting stuff agents um, but if you can ignore them then, uh, then then it's a lot easier 
yeah do you find that i imagine you get quite a lot of people approaching you trying to get you to like sign for their their agency or like their boot deal or like um obviously you're not going to talk about specifically but do you find it hard you must get a lot of requests on like instagram to like promote stuff and that do you does that is that quite a lot or is that not really that big uh yeah it, there, there's a bit it's not too bad um I'm happy with my agent agent at the moment. Really happy. I like Puma as well. They're 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 really really good. Um, but yeah, I just I just don't really really read any 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 of the stuff that comes up on Insta or anything like that. Um, yeah, just just ignore it. Yeah, yeah. Um, do you get sent a lot of boots? I see like on your Instagram and stuff, you get quite a few pair of boots. Do you do you get sent them regularly, or do you sort of have like a one page stick to? Uh, I think uh, with when I was with Nike, they would send kind of three or four boots every three or four months. Um, and you wear through those quite, quite quickly, but Puma, they're, they're, they're really good. They send, what is it? Like eight, eight pairs of every two months or something. Yeah. Um, so they're, they're really good. And you can give them to like your mates or your, your brother as well and, and stuff like that, which, which, which is always nice. I imagine you get quite a few, request, a few requests for like boots and stuff. Like I know, like uh, if I if I uh, add loads of boots, I reckon I'll be getting loads of requests. Like, can I borrow a pair or use a pair? Yeah, I I don't I, I can never tell if they're like a real kid or a bot or something like that. <laughs> and it's just some kid with like ten followers and no profile picture. Like, oh, the, the, there there are some good ones that come up, um, which I try and help out with. Um, but yeah, some of them I, c I can't tell if they're if it's like a real person or someone just just wanting something. I don't. Yeah, but trying to just I try and keep away from that a little bit. But I, I'll, I'll help someone out if they if they if they want something. Yeah, you obviously signed your contract. Um, was it end of last year? Last summer, wasn't it? You signed signed another deal. Uh, yeah, yeah, it was. Yeah, it was during the first lockdown. I think so. It was about then. Yeah. Yeah, there was that quite a big moment. Um, obviously, you had signed a contract before, but signing again to Brighton, like, I think it was it a three year deal you signed? Uh, yeah, yeah, it's three year deal, keeping me till till twenty three. Um, yeah, it's nice, just reassurance, you know, that feel like you're wanted at, at a place is always nice. Yeah. Um. So yeah, it it, it was a good feeling. Yeah, because you see, like, obviously everyone wants to be a footballer. Well, most people do, and like. A lot of people uh, have that worry of like getting dropped and like uh, released by clubs. Do you feel, do you think when you signed that contract, it was like sort of a relief or just like a really good feeling when you signed it? Uh, yeah, yeah, it's a bit, bit of both, bit of relief. It, it feels nice. Um, bit of a celebration afterwards. Yeah. Um, as well as much as I could do during that the time, um, but. Yeah, it's not. It's not the end of the world when you get if you, especially if you're a club like Brighton. It's not the end of the world if you get um, if you get released. You'll you'll get if you work hard enough and go to another club. You'll you'll get picked up, um, definitely. So it's not it's not it's not a massive fear. Yeah, I imagine it's like probably clubs like take note like of players who get who do get released and stuff and like get picked up. Um, and as well, I want to talk about. I think it was like last season you. I saw you got nominated for like uh, Premier League Two Player of the Month. Uh, was that quite a bit oh, yeah. as well? Like sort of getting recognition for for how well you were playing. Yeah, it's nice. Yeah, because uh, it's, it's normally like the Man City, the Man United players, the Arsenal players that always end up getting it. So I, yeah, I was I was only seventeen as well at the, at the time. So I was I was playing up with with the twenty threes. Um, so yeah, that was really nice. It was good. Yeah, you've started regularly this season playing and last year, end of last season as well, playing regularly with the 23s. Was that a big step up from under 18s or did you sort of just take it in your stride? Uh, yeah, it, it is a big step up. You know, they're, they're, in the 23s, there's players that, if the, if the first team players come back from injury, they'll drop down and play. So you're, you're suddenly you're going from playing against other 18 year olds and then you're playing against, like, for instance, last night we were against like Danny Simpson. Yeah. Like a, a someone like that, it's a bit, it's a bit mental. But um, no, nah, it's a good, it's good when you play against those players. You can learn, you can learn a lot of them, which, which is nice. 
Yeah, that's good. Um, do you think, so obviously you've mentioned um, Danny Simpson there, Premier League winner. Is there any other players you've sort of, who have been coming back from injury that you've sort of just been wild by playing against them, like for like Man U or anyone like that? Um, who else has there been? Um, there's no one that no one that springs out there that, that I thought, but we have Crofty who used to play oh, yeah. obviously at Brighton, who plays with us, who's really good. And I think there were there was a lot we played against Bayern Munich a few seasons ago, and I think it was um, what was his name like, like Bad Stuber or something. He was he was a centre back. Oh, yeah, he, yeah. Pl- he played he played. Uh, he wasn't great to be fair, but you could. He was just he was talking the whole game, um, and he just he read the game really really well. Yeah. Um, do you? So you played it obviously against quite a few good players. You've also been training for a fair few months now with the Brighton first team. Um, was that sort of the first day you did that? Was did you find it hard to sort of adjust of training with them, or was it sort of normal playing with them? Um. The the very first time I went was was when Chris was 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 still here. Oh, okay. Um so that that was that was a while ago and that 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 was a bit weird but they all the lads are brilliant they 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 help you settle in really really fast with them. Um they're all they're all nice people so um it, it's easy it's easy to settle in. Yeah, do you think um do you train regularly now with them or do you do it sort of on and off with the 23s and with the first team? Uh, yeah, it's, it's it's weird at the moment because you have to it's because obviously because of COVID you have to test wait a few days for your results to come back then you can go over. Yeah. So every time you go over you have to miss a day which is a bit annoying. Okay. So I think they try and keep you on one side or the other um, for a while. So if if there's if there's a game coming up and the first team running long players and they'll send a few over and you'll go over there for a week. And then you'll go back to the 23s for a week. Um, so yeah, you, you, it's in it's in between the two um, at the minute. Yeah, has um, COVID in, obviously it's impacted everyone, but how has it impacted? How has it impacted your your training and games? Obviously, um, with the 23s, I imagine do you get many fans before COVID or not or not really? Uh, we won't get too many. Maybe a hundred, two hundred. Um, not 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 too many. The big the big teams they would they would they would have a few um, a few fans, um, but no, nah, we wouldn't we wouldn't really get too many. But it, it's 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 definitely more than no one being in the stadium. It feels it feels really weird, even though you're used to playing in front of a smallish crowd. It's very it's really weird when it goes to no one. It's silent. It, it's weird. Yeah. Yeah, and imagine like when you travel to places. Um, I'm not sure. Do you play still play all the 23 games away, or is it more like in one location now, or is it is it still the same? Uh, yeah, it's still the same. You, you'll you'll travel um, to to places and play. That that hasn't changed at all now. Okay, cool. Do you have to like you allowed to mix with the team, or do you have to keep like to yourself, or is it because you're being tested is it a bit more lenient? No, they still have to keep the the two meter. Distance rule wherever you are, as long, apart from on the pitch, obviously, which is a bit annoying and it's hard to stick to when when you're like, oh well, I'm going I'm going to go and run around with him in ten yeah. minutes. What's the point in this? Yeah, um, but the corner, but then you can't stand next. To yeah, him. yeah, yeah. It's a bit annoying, but it's the rules you've got to stick to. You can't you can't complain. Yeah, um, you made your debut last year in the Carabao Cup against Villa. What what was that like playing against like? Uh, Grealish, who's obviously now probably one of the best players in the Premier League at the moment, was that sort of surreal, or was that just sort of? Did you take that sort of as like a weird experience, or like sort of normal for what you want to do? Um, yeah, yeah, it should it should have been normal because obviously it's what I've been training for for ages. But it was it, it was surreal, definitely. Um, I think I'd only played about two or three games in, in the twenty threes that season. I hadn't, I hadn't really played in the twenty threes, and then I trained with the with the first team, um, just as kind of like a like a spare man kind of kind of thing, and done really well. And then I think they just 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 put me into the into the starting eleven. Um, we had a really young young 
young team that that night. Um, there were a few. There were the few of the academy lads um, that played in that. But it, it was a great night for the for the club and for everyone. Even though we lost, it was, it was still good. Yeah, was it like completely different intensity to like the twenty threes? Was it hard to get near the players, or did you did you sort of adjust quite quickly? Uh, no, yeah, it was a lot lot faster. I think I. Was trying to run around after John McGinn all game. He doesn't look, I was because obviously I watch him on TV. I think, oh, he's not, he's not rapid. I, I, I'll, I'll be all right. Uh, he's absolutely, he was like, every time the ball came near him, he just run, run, run. I was blowing after about 10 minutes, I think, thinking, how am I going to get through 90 minutes of this? Yeah. But um, I think just the adrenaline ended up, ended up getting me through it and, and I've done all right. Yeah, were well, you sort of, were you nervous before the game? Did you find out the same day you were playing or was it a few days before? Um, well, the, the the way it works is you kind of, um, a team a team will, will be given to you on the day before a game and the, the gaffer will be like, all right, we'll work with this team today so you can, everyone gets the pictures in, in their mind of what, what's going to go on tomorrow. And um, we were all in, in that team. So we were looking at each other like, are we are we playing tomorrow? Yeah. Um, like, sh- surely not. And then and then we trained we trained in that team. And then I remember I think I picked up Hayden Roberts on the way to the game, and we still look at each other like, no, nah, we sh- we can't be playing this. There's no there's no chance. Yeah. And then we got we got to the game and he read out all the 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 names and we were in it and we were just like, oh my god! And it just it probably it probably was better that way instead of sitting at home thinking about it all day. Yeah, to, f- to find out just there and then was was probably better. Did you have all your family there, or did, did you not get a chance to get everyone there, or did you did they all know you were going to be playing? No, yeah, I managed to get managed to get most people there, um, which, which was nice. It was good. Definitely. Um, what's it like working with Graham Potter? Obviously, you've trained a few times with him, and players like ex England players like Lalana and Welbeck. Um, what's it like playing and training under under Potter and with those players? Yeah, obviously, um, the gaffer's really, really good. He's really, really uh, clever in how he works with with the players. Um, and you can, despite the results, you can see how well they're playing on the pitch at a minute. The way they play football, and he's he's really interesting to work with. And then obviously, Lalana Welbeck. This, um, they're really good. Lalana's obviously because he's a midfielder. I try and watch him as much as I can in training and listen to him. Um, but he, yeah, he's really helpful whenever whenever I go up there. Yeah. Do you think? Um, and obviously, you were on the bench at Man City away, and was it Newport in the cup as well? You're on the bench. What was that? Yeah. Like? Especially Man City, like being on the bench opposite mm. bench to use like probably Mares, Bernardo Silva. What was that like yeah. the bench for that game? Yeah, that was a, kind of kind of the same feeling as, as as the Villa game, even though I wasn't playing. Um, being near those players was a bit because first and foremost, I'm a I'm a football fan. Yeah. Uh, even even though I play it, I, I watch I watch the players on the TV every week. So yeah, it was it was a bit weird. Yeah. Did you were you sort of gutted you didn't come on or just sort of? Glad you got to be on the bench and be around like a Premier League match day squad. Yeah, ob- ob- obviously I wanted wanted to get on the field, but um, you know I, I was grateful for, to to be there and be in and around the squad. It's always, it's always nice nice to go to those those kind of occasions. Yeah, it's good with like the nine subs now. Like gives players like yourself more chance of getting on the bench. Like um, watching, obviously I'm a Spurs fan. Scarlet, I'm not sure. If- mm. Have you played with him at all, Dane Scarlett? No, I haven't played with Dane, no. Yeah, like him, he's getting on the bench at like 16. I think it gives like young players a much better chance of like being in and around the team. And if like the team were in comfortable, you get obviously more chance of getting on the pitch. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Um, yeah, obviously you can see like Dane, I think Shola come on the other night for you. Yeah. For United. Um yeah, there's there, there's some some young players getting real opportunities, um, and obviously the games this year are a lot more cramped to cramped together, um, 
and your people people are getting more tired so you need those extra players so there's 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 some real good opportunities for, for people to get minutes yeah do you think young players get enough chances in general um like for us we we get an academy player in the team at Spurs every now and then do you think most clubs Brighton are quite good at playing people who've come through the academy but do you think generally clubs give enough chance to young players uh yeah, I, yeah, I think they do. When when you're in there every day and you see how good the first team are, you compared to some of like the the twenty threes and like the first the first team are no, no disrespect, they're miles they're miles ahead of the of the twenty yeah. threes. The players there, they're really really good. Um, so I think most most players would struggle going into into first team football now especially in the in the premier league I, I think we we could all do do okay in league 1 league 2 or abroad somewhere but i think it's the premier league it's probably the hardest league to try and to try and break into um for a young player so it it is difficult and i, I think it, i think it, it is kind of fair the 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 amount of minutes young players get yeah yeah especially with so much like pressure on games like every game Apart from maybe towards the end of the season, a few dead rubbers, but like, yeah, game teams have to win now. Um, something that made me laugh recently, I think my brother sent you um, a message. He was playing FIFA, and you came, oh, yeah. your picture came up on the Brighton team. Is that a bit weird? Oh, yeah, you obviously probably play FIFA as well. Is that quite weird? You coming up on, on FIFA, yeah, yeah, I've played FIFA for years. Wow. So it was it was it was nice. Even though I was only fifty five, um, rated. I still use myself, play play myself up front. Um, but um, nah, yeah, it is weird. Really, really, really weird. I just need an ultimate team card now. That yeah. green ninety nine one. I'm <laughs> yeah. trying to get it sorted. You've been speaking to FIFA trying to get the, the card. Yeah, I tried, but my account's been been hacked. Don't ask about it. It's my, my this year has been a. I'll have to write the FIFA 20, 21 off, mate. It's been a shambles. <laughs> FIFA twenty two, you have you have you ninety nine card in midfield. Yeah, I'm gonna try. I'm gonna try. <laughs> um, another question I have was around like uh, sort of playing with the first team and that. Um, next season, do you think, or to maybe towards the end of this season, depending on where like Brighton are in the league, do you think um you'll get more opportunities with like being on the bench, even more like against City and stuff, or um, do you think because of like the games and stuff being so cramped together, it'll be hard to get an opportunity, or do you not? Are you not really sure? Um, I would like to think. I would like to think I can get get a few more bench, maybe maybe an appearance. Um, but each each place in the Premier League is millions and millions of pounds, and obviously at the moment clubs need money. Um, so it, yeah, it's difficult, but. Obviously, obviously, I'd like to be in and around there a bit more. Yeah, definitely. Um, do you? I was just wondering if you could talk us through sort of like your day to day training, sort of what it's like. Um, maybe when you train with the first team, like uh, sort of when you start and what sort of things you do in training. Yeah. Um, so if if it's if it's a day where we we've we've played a game a few days before or the or the day before, we'll come in. We'll do some recovery, maybe a bit of upper body work, um, not too bad. And then if it's a working day, get in around nine-ish, have breakfast at the club, um, some activation stuff in the gym, maybe around 10.30-ish. And then out on the pitch, 10.45 to about half 11. Um, and that, that'll, that'll be a tough session, mini games. Um possessions, things like that. Um, and then maybe in the gym after that again for, for some lower body work. Yeah. Yeah, it sounds quite like you do quite a lot in, in one day. Are you in every day or is it like, are you in six days a week other than match or do you get any recovery days? Uh, it, it, it changes. It changes every week. Sometimes you'll get three days off. Sometimes you'll get none. Yeah. Um, so yeah, it, it does change a lot depending on how Thick and fast, the fixtures are coming. Um, it, it, will, it will always change. Well, uh, you got a new a flat or a house recently. Um, how was that sort of a bit of a weird moment? 
obviously like uh, me and probably most people are still living living at home. Um, like yeah. I'm cooking my dinner every night. What was that sort yeah. of a weird one moving out, or was that uh, did that seem normal with sort of what you're doing? Uh, yeah, no, you know, yeah, it's quite normal. All the all the like all the most of the lads that are here are all are all foreign. So they live in digs. So um, they, they've all got their, their kind of freedom. Um, so I, I just wanted mine um, a bit more. So I just, yeah, it's nice. It's, it's, it's all right here. It's not too bad. Yeah. Um, Elliot winding you up every day. No, no, no. He's, he's gone now, mate. <laughs> um, is it like, do you find it hard? Like, do you have to cook for yourself or do you have like, um, someone cook like uh, if I moved out right now I'd have absolutely no chance um, I can barely make beans on toast to be honest do you, do you yeah it's hard starting out cooking for yourself yeah no I try I try and cook a bit I can I can do a little bit but I still I still go home um, and have dinner a bit um, get my mum to cook yeah um, and then I just come back up to the flat and sleep here um, <laughs> yeah so yeah so it's not too bad yeah, that's not bad. Um, another thing I wanted to ask, like, uh, it's been in the news this week about when Grealish got injured, all the Villa players took him out of their fantasy team. I don't know if you saw. So, like, uh, Leicester knew he wasn't going to play. Do you, Is that something people do at Brighton, play fantasy football a lot? Uh, yeah, yeah, they do. They, they talk about it um, every day, pretty much. Do you... Uh, with your mates like would you get in trouble say if you knew like Dunk wasn't playing and then you, you had him in and you took him out would you get in trouble or would, is it not really a big thing uh, you, yeah you, pro- you probably would a little bit obviously not as bad as the as, as the Villa plays it wouldn't it wouldn't leak that much but it, I don't I don't think it would be it would be great if if, if we'd done it but um, I don't know if anyone has Dunk to be fair in their team I'm not sure <laughs> Yeah. Um, and lastly, before we get on to going through some questions that people are asking, um, I just wanted to ask, like, uh, sort of um, recently there was stuff about, um, on the, in on Instagram I saw about, I um, can't remember his name, the Man City player got released and then sadly committed suicide. Like, um, do you think there's enough support there, like, uh, from football clubs for, like, when people get released or injured, like your, yourself was injured, do you think, there's enough people at football clubs to like talk to and stuff like this, or do you think that more could be done for that sort of thing? Uh, yeah, obviously, always there, 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 there could be more stuff done. Um, I think that there, there's a good, good scheme at Brighton that, that goes on. You know, if if you get released, then the club will really try and help you find find a new club. Um, yeah, it's, it's, it's a tough one. I'd, I'd, um, I, d- I didn't really know know the guy. I know, I know a lot of players at City, and obviously they were all devastated, and they were really close with him. Yeah. Um. So, yeah, I'm not. I'm not too sure. Cool. And then, so I've got some questions here that I asked on Instagram. I think a couple of your teammates put some in. That I'm not sure you'll be. <laughs> no, don't 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 ask me those. <laughs> um. I'll start with one of those. Uh. So Rocco Reese, who's a goalkeeper. In the Brighton under twenty threes, is that right? Yeah. Yeah, he said, "Why do you always get nutmegged in rondos?" <laughs> uh, Rocco, Rocco, mate. If he's what, if he's watching this, he's he's. Do you know? Do you know what rondos are? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, he does. You know, he does not come out the middle. That guy. <laughs> he gives it away every every thirty seconds, and he's in the middle. And I, 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 I don't go in. You do it. So if you get nutmegged, you stay in. Yeah, fifteen passes or a nutmeg, and you, and you stay in. It's quite fun, to be fair. You do it normally, match day minus one when you're doing a light session, uh, and it's a bit of fun. But he he's always in the middle of that guy. <laughs> um, someone else asked, "What's your preferred position?" You said midfield before, but is there like an exact position you prefer? Um, I like yeah, I like I like playing advanced in midfield, not not just off the striker, but. If the, if there was a position between sort of like a centre forward role and a cam role, it'd probably be being and around there. Um, 
yeah, that, that, that's probably my preferred position. But I don't, I don't mind playing anywhere in, in, in midfield, to be fair. Yeah, is there sort of a player you watch, like maybe in the Premier League now, and sort of your position that you want to play like or you think you play like? Uh, yeah, I like Madison at the moment. I've, I thought he's been quality for the last... I, I remember watching him at Norwich and I thought thought he was a, he was a good player. Yeah. Um, obviously, Grealish, Grealish is good when he, he can play that role. He's, I don't know he plays plays a bit more on the left at the minute, but he can he can do that role. Um, Mason Mount, I like I like watching him as well. Yeah, I so think, that I think Mount's got like this season got even better. I think he's quality. Definitely, yeah, he's he's a really good player, and I like I like watching him a lot. Yeah. Um, someone else asked, uh, where did the dream start, and where is it going to take you? Um. Where did it start? Probably just playing it, playing in the park with my mates. Just that 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 was always fun. Yeah. Um, so to do to do kind of that now, just playing football with your mates every day for a job is is a dream in itself, which 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 is really which is really nice, and I'm lucky to be in that position. Um, and where it would take me, uh, who knows? I don't. Obviously, I want to be a play at the top um, level for for years. Um, so yeah, that, 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 that's probably where where I'd like to end up. Yeah. Um, someone else asked, "How did it feel?" Obviously, we spoke about it a bit before, but how did it feel making your debut against Villa? Uh, yeah, it was like like I said, really really surreal walking out to all those fans, um, the cameras. It was. It was a bit crazy, but I enjoyed every every single minute of it, and I, I want to do it more and more. Definitely. Um, and someone else asked, "Who's the best player in training at Brighton?" Um, I would have to say, uh, Bissouma. But yeah. don't go near him, or you'll get a stamp on your foot or a bloody nose. Well, he, he will get you. Is he quite aggressive when you go up to train with the first team? Yeah, he will get you. Yeah, but he loves a nutmeg as well. So I just I'd stay away from Basuma in training. <laughs> um, my brother asked, "How have you found?" We spoke about it a bit before, but how have you found balancing social life and football? Uh, yeah, it's yeah, it's not too bad um, because obviously all my mates are uh, at the club and we're all we're all in the same kind of position. So yeah, I I, I don't mind it. I've got no. No problem with it. I've still got I've still got time to go and see like my school friends and that, so it, it, it's fine. Yeah, and um, another another question was: uh, Have you got any plans of going out on loan um, next season or any time in the future? Obviously, your friend Hayden went out on loan um, at the start of this season. Do you think you do anything similar, or would you rather train with continue training and get an opportunity at Brighton? Uh, obviously, I have to see how it goes in in pre season where I'm where I'm at uh, at, the, at the start of next season. Ideally, it will probably be probably be alone. I'm not I'm not too sure where. I don't know if I, if I'd like to play in League One yeah. or League Two. I'd maybe I've seen I've seen a lot of players go abroad and do really well. I wouldn't mind doing that. Yeah. Um. So yeah, who knows? But I think. I think the best for me. I definitely want to play in in a, in a first team next year. Um, so if it's not a Brighton, then ideally that would be a good loan. Yeah, just do you think it would just benefit you a lot getting first team minutes? So like obviously, it's great training and being with the first team, but I guess you can't be like playing an actual game it, that means like three points and stuff like that. Yeah, no, definitely. I think the. One of the main things a manager would pick you is if he is whether he trusts you or not, and I think that's how you gain you gain trust is by playing first team. You know? um, so obviously, if you, if you want to try and break into the the first team mold kind of kind of thing, you need to you need to gain some kind of experience. Cool. And then my last question was just: Do you have any funny stories from Brighton training that uh, you'd be able to share at all? Like. Any funny uh, from training with twenty threes or first team? Um, I've got a few. I don't know if I can <laughs> if I can say them. Uh, yeah, some no. with 
yeah um there's always fun with the sprinklers all the time when they come on you like you can run up to and twist them around and, and you'll get players um oh, this is funny yeah the one the, the the really funny ones i can't i don't i don't know if i'd be allowed to say there some yeah. of them are some of them are bad but there are some there are some really funny ones yeah Cool. Well, thank you very much for coming on and uh, answering my and other people's questions. Thank you very much, mate. It's been a pleasure. Cheers.